Kia ora Year 13 and Year 12 and Year 11. This is the third video going over Practice Assessment A. So in this one I'm going to look at Part 3 where John is still obsessed with trig equations and he believes that the following equations are true always. So we're going to work on this one. Um, it's probably worth doing videos 1 and 2 first because I think this one is slightly harder. And we have to prove if John is right or not. If he's not right we have to figure out whether there are any times where that equation is going to be true. We're going to do that first by finding the general solution and then we're going to find particular or specific solutions for x in the domain from negative pi up to pi. Okay so it's worth um, noting that and now we're going to take a look at both sides. So one thing we can do is we can put each side in the graphics calculator and we can see that they're not the same thing. Now how can I see that just from looking? Well let's look at the range of this function. So the range here, and I'm going to isolate just this bit because I've got a plus 1 on both sides. So the range of this function goes from root 2 to negative root 2, right? Because the cosine curve looks like this. It goes from 1 to negative 1. So when I say it goes from, we have negative 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 1. Now when I scale it, um, the range is from negative root 2 to y to root 2. Let's take a look now at the right hand side and we can see just looking at this part because the plus 1's are the same. So the range we've got now is different. Now how come? Well I've got cos of 2x plus pi on 4 that has a range from negative 1 to 1. But if I square that and get cos squared of 2x plus pi on 4, the range is between 0 and y and 1. So I know that those two equations can't always be the same because there's nowhere in here that's going to give me negative values. Whereas there are some values in here that are going, of x that are going to give me negative values. So we know that it's not always true because um, we can see it from the graphical features and we can see that those two curves intersect if we sketch those two graphs. Right, so what can we say? Well, we can say that the equations are sometimes true. So what we want to do now is to solve them. So we've got root 2 cos of 2x plus pi on 4 plus 1 is equal to root 2 cos squared 2x plus pi on 4 plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, which leaves this. Right, so I'm doing this showing every little step so that the person reading it can see exactly what we've done. Now we've multiplied, we're going to multiply, sorry, divide both sides through by root 2. And that gives me cos of 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to cos squared of 2x plus pi on 4. Now if you think about what happens, or what happened back in about year 11 where you had quadratics that looked like this, suppose that we had x squared equals 8x. So what would we have done with that to solve it? Well, to solve a quadratic, we need to gather up everything on one side. So we would have gone like this. x squared minus 8x is 0. And then we'd factorize it. And we'd write something like this. Either x equals 0 or x equals 8. Well, we're going to do exactly that here, just with trig functions. But it's not really any harder. So. Let's um, get, subtract this one from both sides. So we're going to have 0 is equal to cos squared of 2x plus pi on 4 minus cos of 2x plus pi on 4. Now I've got a common factor of cos of 2x plus pi on 4. So I'm going to factorize it as follows. Alright, so I've got 0 equals 
something times something else. And if either of those somethings is zero, then I've got a solution to the equation. So we're now going to do general solutions on those two factors. So either cos 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to 0, or cos of 2x plus pi on 4 minus 1 equals 0. So working with this one, that gives me cos of 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to 1. Right, so let's work through our general solutions. Um, by the way, you should be doing this yourself with pen and paper, so now is probably a good time to pause the video and see if you can get the whole way through to the end of both the general solutions and the particular solutions. So the first thing I do is I find my principal value. Alpha is the angle whose cosine is 0, and we know that that's pi on 2. So I know that because my basic, you know that, some of you are going to know that from your calculator, but we should know that from the shape of the cos graph. Remember it starts up here um, with cos of 0 is 1, and it's going to hit 0 at pi on 2. Now, how do I work with general solutions? Well, 2x plus pi on 4, which is all that stuff in there, is equal to 2n pi plus or minus pi on 2. I'll come back to this one over here in a minute. Following that through, we get 2x equals 2n pi minus pi on 4 plus or minus pi on 2. Now, in the last video, I talked about why I write the minus pi on 4 next to this bit. So if you can't remember that, go back and watch. It's to reduce errors. Next, I have to divide through by 2. So x is equal to n pi minus pi on 8 plus or minus pi on 4. So that's my first general solution. Now I'm going to do the general solution for the other one while I'm here. You could keep going and do particular. Right, so we need to find alpha. Alpha is the angle whose cosine is 1, and that's just going to be 0. So here we have 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to 2n pi plus or minus 0. So that's easy. 2x plus pi on 4 is equal to 2n pi. 2x is equal to 2n pi minus pi on 4. x is equal to n pi minus pi on 8. Okay, so something weird just happened with the recording. Um, it's gone, everything's gone away. No, here we are. Okay, so we've got our two um, general solutions now, right? This one here just disappeared. Oh, I'm really having trouble with this technology tonight guys sorry about that there we go there's the x one there and here's the second one here so that's fine but we want to find the particular solutions so I'm going to work through each one n equals 0 then n equals 1 then I'll do n equals negative 1 some people just like to start at negative 2 and work up right so get your own system but what we've got to check is that we're ending up with x values where we want them so looking at that first one um, we had x is equal to n pi minus pi on 4, plus or minus pi on 8. Just going to check that that's right. No, that's wrong. Okay, so x is equal to n pi minus pi on 8, plus or minus pi on 4. So ditch that. Just be really careful that you don't do what I just did and copy it out wrong. Okay, now we're going to start substituting in. So when n equals 0, we get x is equal to negative pi on 8 minus pi on 4. And x is equal to negative pi on 8 plus pi on 4. That gives me negative pi on 8 minus 2 pi on 8, which is negative 3 pi on 8. Um, over here, I get negative pi on 8 plus 2 pi on 8, which gives me pi on 8. So that's the first two. Now are they both in the right domain? Are they between negative pi and pi? Yes they are, so give them a tick so that you can check them off later. Right, let's work up now. 
let's do n equals 1. So x is equal to pi minus pi on 8 minus pi on 4 and x is equal to pi minus pi on 8 plus pi on 4. So this one is going to be good. If we put it all over 8 we get 8 pi minus pi minus 2 pi. Right, so just common denominator, common denominator ring. And that one gives me 5 pi on 8. So that gets a big tick. But this one doesn't. So that's 8 pi minus pi plus 2 pi. So that one is greater than pi. You don't have to write down the value for that one. You can just see that here we've got 9 pi on 8. So that's outside the domain that I'm after. So we've got 3. Now let's go and do um, n equals negative 1. Well, we get x equals negative pi minus pi on 8 minus pi on 4. Or x equals negative pi. Very boring this, isn't it? Right. I have done more exciting maths, even today. So here we've got negative 8 pi minus pi minus 2 pi. And so that's less than negative pi, so that's a cross. And here we've got negative 8 pi minus pi plus 2 pi divided by 8. And that's just going to sneak in. That's going to give me negative 7 pi on 8. So that is in the range that I want. So there's another one. Now let's have a look. How close am I getting at both ends? Well, at the bottom end I've got down to negative 7 pi on 8. So that's probably okay. I probably don't need to go to n equals negative 2. Um, you can see that I won't have to because here I'd be taking off another pi that would give me negative 15 pi on 8. So that would be no good. All right, now let's look at the top end and check the same thing. We had n equals 1. One of them was already out of the domain that I want. It was too big. This one here, if I added another pi, I'd have 13 pi on 8 and that would be no good. So we're done with that equation. So we've got our four particular solutions from that one. But remember, we had two factors, and so we've got two general solutions. So let's not forget this poor wee one up here. Now we've got to find general solutions here. Right, but this one's going to be easier. We've got x equals n pi minus pi on 8. So let's just start. We'll chuck in n equals negative 1 and we get x equals negative pi minus pi on 8. So that's less than negative pi, so that's no good. So notice this time I've decided that I am just going to work in order to show you how that goes. So we've got x equals negative pi on 8, so that's good, that's in my domain. And then n equals 1, uh, x is equal to pi minus pi on 8, which is 7 pi on 8, so that's good too. And you can see if we do n equals 2, we're going to have x is equal to 15 pi on 8. So that's no good. So we've got this one and this one. So altogether, let's see how many we've got. Because some of them might overlap. We just have to write them in one big list. Because what we're saying is here are all the ways that that equation is going to be true. So what have we got here? Well, we've got negative this one, this one, this one. And I've got one that I've lost, this one here. So if we chuck them all into a list, negative 3, see if I can remember them. Uh, we get x equals as follows. Um, negative 7 pi on 8. Pi on 8. These are not in order. Negative 3 pi on 8. 5 pi on 8. Negative pi on 8 and 7 pi on 8. Now that's kind of as they came out when we did it, but I don't really like that, so I really have to put those in order to finish. Okay, so there we go. I've magically put them all in order without you having to listen to me do it. Um, and uh, that's all for tonight. I will do one of the other practice tasks tomorrow night, but you might want to go and do them on your own first. Thanks for watching.